here with Lisa Carney. And we're going to be talking about Photoshop and career building. And I'm really excited to be here with her because she has such a wealth of knowledge and she's so excited to share that with you. So let's see who has joined us already. Eric is here. Good to see you, Eric. He says, most people don't read. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tim. Hi, Sarah, Chad. Don Anjay, let us know where you're joining from. We're here in San Francisco. Beautiful Do you day. live in San Francisco? No, I'm in LA. I'm in oh, Hollywood okay. town. She's yeah. from Hollywood. Yeah. Very glamorous. Mm. I'd like to think so. <laughs> so Lisa's visiting from LA. Where are you guys visiting us from? Agata is visiting from Poland. Wow. Hi, Heidi. Welcome back. Hi, Anissa. Anissa. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Hi, Chelsea in Seattle, Denise, Hanadi, Denise is in Kansas. Hi, Ray. Hi, Betty from Rhode Island, Rainy. Oh, Guatemala. Okay. Wow. Nice. Axel. JC's from London. You have a lot of people. Yeah, this is a lot great. of people come in from all over the world. So it's very exciting. Jesse's from Amish country in Pennsylvania. Very cool, Netherlands. I have to say, this is one of the things I love about that you guys do this streaming, is it opens up the community to be so large. And I know I often work in a vacuum and with the same group of people yeah. or even just alone a lot. And something about Adobe Live and the streaming, it just opens up everything to a conversation. I think it's really amazing. It's true, and most people who join also work independently and, yeah. you know, designing and sitting in front of your computer is a little isolating. So yeah. it's great to have this community. So welcome everyone. And we have all, almost all of the continents represented so far. <laughs> we have India, Nigeria, Brazil, we had Poland, we have the US, wow. Amsterdam. So it's getting to a Andrew good start. in Santa Barbara, hi sweetie. <laughs> so Lisa, we brought you here um, to tell us more about your career and all of your nuggets of wisdom because I know you have so much to share. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I am a, a entertainment Do you want to maximize your slides here because we're sharing your screen Let's now. Let's see. You tell me if this works out. Is that good enough? Yeah. Would that work for now? Does it go full screen? I don't know. I don't know how to make this go full screen other than that. Let me see. There you go. I nope, that's I think that's it. Oh, my, nope, that's it. Sorry. Okay, well, it's well, big Well, that's enough. what you get. It's you, big. I'm big, big, <laughs> large there. Okay, so um, I am an entertainment uh, finisher. Finisher, what that means is I do print design. So okay. not only do I do design work, which is probably only about 15% of my work, but the rest of it is finishing, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes, uh, about comping, designing versus finishing. Been doing it for, ooh, 25 years, 30 years. Wow. Oh, I've been doing it a really long time. Um, comping versus finishing, I'm gonna show you some portfolio pieces in just a second. Uh, but comping, comping is when you design the ideas. You come out, you, you do a bunch of ideas, and you do it rough, quick, clean, hopefully. And finishing is the client has seen, what, 200 comps, uh, 50 comps, 1,000 comps if it's Spider-Man. And then you have to rebuild it perfect for the output. And that's what a finisher does. Oh. As opposed wow, to comping design. Even yeah, know it's that a whole, existed. whole different skill set. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Let me show you um, just a few portfolio pieces just to give you an, uh, kind of a breadth of a little bit of the kind of stuff I do. Sure. So Hopefully. everyone who's joining, thank you for joining. I know people are coming in as we speak and say hi. Um, hi Lars, hi Lindsay, hi Robert. And make sure that you also join the Photoshop Discord because we have a challenge. Um, Juan Jose was just live showing us how to create a really cool night scene. So the challenge is to use visual effects such as neon reflections and shadows to unify a night scene. And all you have to do is go into the Photoshop Discord in the Discord app and there's tons of people talking on there and sharing their work. So I encourage you to do that and we will be showing people's submissions tomorrow. Excellent. 
So that's really cool. And Tim just put the link here in the chat. Perfect. So um, again, I'm just going to show you a few of the more current or some of the work that I've been working on um, doing. It's all entertainment. It's all print. And uh, as I said, I've been doing this for a really long time. There's standees, there's digital finishes, there's all kinds of uh, genres, which we'll talk a bit a little bit about later. Um, I do beauty retouching, TV, streaming, DC comic, uh, Marvel stuff. And it's pretty exciting. It's a pretty, pretty fun career. And as I've said, I've been, look how old this is. I've been doing this for a really <laughs> long time. So does someone hand you something and then what do you have to do to finish? Oh, that is so interesting. So uh, for finishing and comping, comping is one thing. So what will often happen is you will have, let's say, uh, anywhere from one day to five days to come up with some de design ideas. On average, you're expected to do three comps. So consider this a comp, for example, this, this piece here. Mm -hmm. You'll have three days to come up, um, pardon me, one day you need to have three designs. Hopefully your client will give you a week. So what you can do is actually contemplate, figure out uh, some context, get some ideas, get some resources together, and then you, you bang out the comps. Okay. A finish, it used to be to finish these pieces back in the good old days, we'd have a week. So the client would finally, so if you look at this teacher's piece, they'd say, great, we want to do this. This was made up of about 12 pieces, 12 different pieces of uh, photography to build it. And you'd say, great, give me five days and you'll have your finish. Any more, you get 24 hours, mm. if you can imagine. So it's, it's, it's incredibly challenging uh, to get a finish done quickly. And um, because I work in a collaborative work environment, what I mean by that is I have to work with other people. So someone else often has done the design work or let's say on something like this, let's say I do the retouching on the dog, but someone else is doing the chair because as I said, you get oh, one day. Yeah. So sometimes you have to divide up the work. So as I'm talking through the next two days, I'm gonna talk production heavy. And what I mean by that is you absolutely have to label everything because you have to give your file to somebody else. Yeah. And you have to work fast. So you have to know what layers are what. And if you, um, if you, everything's layer one, layer 75, how are you gonna know what's what's what? So yeah. if for those of you who don't work in a collaborative work environment, you may find that a little tedious that I keep saying, label your layers, label your layers. You can just ignore me, but I'm kind of a, a It's good stickler. for if you're by yourself too. Yeah, I think, you don't remember what you yeah, did yesterday. I, I think so too. And I think it's just professionalism. So I, I hope this is okay, but my, my intent here is to talk about professional workflow. I want you guys to all have um, money and work and, and do what you love. And so I'm really into trying to help people to do that. Oh, someone's asking if Sensei plays into workflow and it absolutely does, but I'll talk about that probably more tomorrow. Um, anyway, hopefully this is giving you a bit of a, an idea of the wide range. Do you notice mm -hmm. how the styles are all completely different? It's yeah. because I'm not, my job, I'm not an artist who is giving you my point of view. Mm -hmm. and, and selling that, I'm actually selling your point of view, the client's point of view, the client's show, the client's idea. And um, so like when Brooke, you had Brooke Shaden here, who's an amazing artist, she does great stuff. She is selling her vision. Mm -hmm. My job is actually to, to service someone else's idea when I'm talking about my work world, this kind of Got world. Got it. So, so just because I didn't know anything about your expertise, um, I didn't know what finishing was. Is it, if you could summarize it, is it making different elements fit in together and look like a finished piece? Yeah, it's basically, okay, imagine this. It, when, when folks are coming up with design ideas, oftentimes it's kind of like a kitchen sink thing. You're grabbing a, a stock shot from here, an illustration from here, maybe something you shot with an iPhone. Different lighting. Di a hundred percent different lighting. Yeah. And then my job is to put it all together as seamlessly as humanly possible. Um, oftentimes, you'll have a body shot where someone's doing this and then the head, they just want that. So I'm doing head strips. Oh, wow. And then certainly doing beauty because I assure you, everyone in Hollywood has the same issues we have, <laughs> every single one of them. So it's a lot of beauty retouching, color correction, that kind of thing. Okay, got it. Cool. Um, I d also want to talk a little bit about um, just creatives, work in general. So if you see my um, Facebook page, that's very personal stuff. My Behance is all my 
art work, if you will. I have no commercial work on my Behance because this is where I have my, my own, what I'd call self-expression pages where I'm trying to do art. And I'm trying to retain this notion that I started this career because I like doing art. Yeah. And when you do commercial work, it's so easy to lose track of that because it's it's a business. You're you're you're, you're working, and um, so I keep them very separate. So this is a, a current series I've been working on on grief. Um, a lot of the techniques, though, that you'll see in this kind of thing, I do in my professional work. So there is a crossover, and I think it's important for us to, I don't know, have both. You know, have a commercial world where we work but also have a creative outlet where we're expressing ourselves. And mm -hmm. I personally, um, I like that my income is not tied into my personal expression, but other folks like Brooke, has made, she's made a living out of her personal expression. So yeah. you, you kind of find your way. But I assure you the techniques that we're gonna talk about um, over the next two days and this are all the same for me. It's just what, am I, what story am I telling? How do you have time to do this creative stuff for your own self-fulfillment when yeah. you're also doing your commercial projects? Um, I'm going to say that's probably the best question in the world um, because many people have said, why are you sitting behind a computer doing artwork when you sit behind a computer every day, <laughs> all day? And um, I'm kind of a Photoshop freak. Like, I love it. And what I mean by that is if I get together with Photoshop people, I can actually sit up till two or three in the morning talking about, oh my God, do you use frequency separation? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> so there's something wrong with me, clearly. Um, and these, I can tell you because of the work I do and the amount of time I spend in Photoshop, it only takes me a, a day to do these. Wow. So I'll do That's these cool. on my, di my day off. I yeah. know, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> well. It's not. It's it's great to have passions, and whatever yeah. you're passionate about fulfills you. And if it's Photoshop, it's Photoshop. If it's, I mean, everyone has all kinds of things they're interested yeah. in. Yeah. So. And you know, on that note, it's I will not tell a you, bad thing to be passionate about. Yeah, maybe not, <laughs> huh? And I will tell you, I started uh, as a photographer. I went to Art Center in Pasadena for photography, okay. and so I shoot every single day. I still shoot all the time. I love shooting. It's my favorite thing. Um, uh, Again, I, I don't have a, oddly enough, I don't have a SLR camera anymore. I, I'm an iPhone moment lens shooter. And I think this keeps me better shooting. I think it keeps mm -hmm. me better uh, as a retoucher and as a designer because it keeps me seeing things. Do, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, Sarah says, I use frequency separation for jewelry retouching. It's awesome. It's awesome for everything. Yay, Sarah. I love it. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Um, cool. So that's a, that's a little bit about me and, and the Great. work I do. And um, hopefully folks will find this interesting and we can continue. That's yes. good. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So comping versus finishing. So here's kind of how I see the next couple days going it, today and tomorrow is we're going to be working on a, a 1980s style uh, character cell poster. But one of the things I have found is it's really hard for folks to get ideas and assets. Mm -hmm. And so my goal here is to actually give you some resources, where to go, where to get some ideas, and some context for a poster. And what I mean by that is if you look at these different designs, there's all different kinds of posters we do for different reasons. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that just to give you guys a reference so you know what you're doing. Um, this is a really quick little sample of the difference between a comp versus a finish. And for this project, we're gonna just do comp because we're gonna do it quick. But a comp is down and dirty. So if you can, on the screen, I know it'll be a little difficult to see, but there's halos around the trees. The darkening is not bled out all the way onto the side. The street's not really resolved. A finish, once you've decided that's what you want, you go up and clean it afterwards. Okay, so that's kind of difference between a comp and a finish. I have to show this because it's total crap and I just want to give you all hope. We all start somewhere. That is my very first video box ever, right there. Natural causes. That's my brother-in-law with the fake gun. It's That's so bad. bad, sorry, it's right behind you, sorry. Um, anyway, and then I started doing DVD art where you covered uh, video boxes, that's how old I am, oh. uh, where you colorized. And I, I just want to give you guys all hope because you will get there I promise like look how crappy that was and now I don't do that crap anymore um, 
Someone asked about resolution for comps versus finish, and I'm going to talk about file size as oh, we yeah. go on. Okay, so. Ray, keep Ray, hang watching. In there, honey. Also, everyone stay tuned because while we have our chat and win coming up, you can see the countdown right here. It's in 13 minutes, and we are giving away 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. So you can make your own custom stickers with any design you want, and they're three by three inches, die cut stickers, and you have a chance to win as long as you stay tuned. All you have to do is stay in the chat and keep saying hello and asking questions. I could use some stickers as you see. I'm sorely, <laughs> sorely lacking some. You can some. send them to Lisa. Yeah, please. Um, so one thing I really would like to stress, uh, I find this to be really important as I'm out there in the world talking, is folks want to get so fast, so quick. Please, slow your roll. Let's get good, then you'll get fast. I promise, I promise. Everything's not quick, 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 quick. <sighs> slow your roll. Yeah. And, and so that's my goal with you guys too. And in addition, I really wanted to talk about um, different ways of learning. So one of the things I've, I've discovered teaching all these years, I've been teaching for about 25 years Photoshop, mm. in addition to retouching, is that I find in your brain, when you're trying to learn new techniques, you're kind of in the technical side versus the creative side. And for me personally, it's really hard to be creative when I'm trying to learn a technique. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. uh, my brain's kind of going, wait, wait, wait. So my suggestion is maybe do some technical learning, kind of like, you know when you learn music and you do your scales? Or if you're yeah. knitting, you knit a swatch. So maybe consider this project a swatch. You know, we're, we're mimicking or practicing. And then the next time you go out or your next project, then have that be a creative process where you're telling your story. Like, you know, that grief series. That was me telling my personal story. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't a technical exercise. And um, you'll be able to find a roadmap. Like once you have a, your creative idea, I wouldn't try to learn frequency separation when you're trying to express a story on grief. Hopefully that makes makes some sense here. So keep yeah. that in mind as, as we're going through. Um, another thing I wanted to chat about is just tool to straight. What do you use? What do you use to work? So I actually do not retouch on a laptop. I retouch on a, on a tower. But for, for here, obviously, I'm bringing a laptop. Um, I definitely, definitely suggest some kind of tablet, either a Wacom or a Cintiq. And you can get a small Cintiq. Uh, you can get a small tablet. That little small Wacom tablet that you see there is like 30 bucks. You can get them refurbished. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can take an iPad and use it with a an app like uh, AstroPad and actually make it a poor man Cintiq. Yeah. Which is fantastic. And then, of course, you can use uh, an iPad, and when Photoshop's out on the iPad, that's all good. So anyway, I just wanted to give, give, give a little tools yeah. of the trade. Yeah, everyone's but always interested in the tools. Yes. So it, it's good to show that. Excellent. And definitely, definitely, definitely try to get a tablet if you're going to be a retoucher or a compositor. Doing it with the mouse is just a no-go. I understand some of you can't just yet, but eventually put that on your list. Shall we get started on this poster conversation? I think so. Let's see who else joined us and say hi. Um, Afaf781, Claudie joined. Claudie says, Lisa is so awesome. Aww. She's been our guest before on live streams. Um, Jagadish is looking for guidelines on poster design. You're in the right place. We're starting now. Hana yeah. D says, how to start with the idea. It's so coming. I think everyone is waiting for exactly what you're about to say. So she has some great tips on poster design. And stay tuned. Chat and wins coming in 10 minutes. So let's get started with the next part. Excellent. Of this. So you guys, uh, I know a lot of people are asking about how you start. This is what we're going to do. So bear with me because I really want to give you some context here. Okay. So first of all, there's different genres. So whatever genre you want to produce, let's talk about it. You have comedy, romance. Those are generally on white or light. There's action, adventure, family types of images. And I'm going to show you where to find all these. So don't panic. Uh, drama, murder, horror, blood, dark. You have space with light and blue and uh, cyan colors. There's animation, Pixar, think Pixar style. Mm -hmm. You've got DC style images versus Marvel. So DC, if you think about Superman and Batman, they're very dark, a little more rooted in reality. You've got Marvel, which is a little more fantasy, a little brighter colors, almost like you've stepped through a portal and you're in a different world. 
Now, that's changing a slight bit because DC is starting to lighten up because Marvel's kicking it so hard that they're kind of copying them a little bit. But anyway, so keep that in mind as we're looking at some stuff. Then there are solutions. So, uh, oh, someone just called out a uh, typo. I can't spell. I'm ADD. I'm <laughs> dyslexic. That should be drama. Sorry. I'm. Dream. You're going to find this all over the place. Just get, yeah, you get used to it with me. I can't You spell. know what it means. Ah, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, the next thing, in addition, we're going to talk about the solution. So graphic solves versus a container solve versus like an illustration, which we're going to do for this class. Um, underwater, big heads, flame, that sort of thing. So these are just ideas for you to think about as I as we start going through this. Cool. And um, Lisa is going to share this deck with everybody at the end. Yes. Right? So um, you, someone said you're too fast. So darling, I get that complaint all the time. I speak very quickly. God love YouTube. You can slow it down on YouTube on the replay when you guys watch <laughs> this again. You can also um, replay it a bunch of times. I do talk fast. You guys can get this whole deck from me. Just email me at Lisa LisaCarney.com and I'll have something at the end. Yeah. And it'll give you can get this whole PDF and look at this. We'll again. find a way for you to get the whole PDF. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. So let's talk about different poster types. So you have the teaser, which is kind of the announce that something's coming. And then you have the payoff or the key art, which is the final it's out. And it's generally a bigger piece. And then you have what we call a character cell. So that's what we're going to do on this project is a character cell because it's one piece. And you'll find this all over. It doesn't matter what genre you're in, you'll still have these poster types. So with The Angel Has Fallen, you've got the teaser, which is basically a little announce. And um, notice there's no billing block there. It's generally, they generally they don't have the actor's names on it. It's just an announce and usually a copy line. Inside the middle there, you have the, 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 the finished piece, the key art. Sometimes they match, sometimes they don't. And then you'll have the character cells, copy driven individual characters. Mm. You even have this with animation. So why I'm showing this to you guys is it's not genre specific. The poster types are the poster types, then the genres are the genres. And so even with, let's say, an animation film, like this would be like a Pixar kind of film, you still have the teaser and then you have the character cells. The payoff is not out yet for this right now. That's oh, okay. why I don't have it. Okay, here's the other thing to keep in mind when you guys are designing, especially if you want to do this for a career, and I'm, happy to talk about careers in this kind of industry. You've got to keep in mind that it's not just a, a, a one sheet. It's not just a, a, a vertical rectangle you're, you're making. You're going to have to come up with a two sheet, a billboard, horizontal, again, the character cells. And then with streaming, good Lord, this is completely different now. With streaming, it's a whole nother ball of wax here. Yeah, because you need every Look device. At this. I that think is this is, it. there's something like 37 different boards you need to have for Netflix. Wow. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because we're talking about poster design and when you're designing your posters, you actually have to already think about this. You can't, so you don't want to pick a body with no legs or no something <laughs> because you're going to have to do more with it. Yeah. Or you're just going to have to keep in mind that you're going to have to do it later down the road. Yeah. Kaze says, this is so cool. Props to Behance. Yeah, I love Behance. <laughs> Yay, props We have hands. a lot of people joining even now. So welcome if you just joined. We're here with Lisa talking about poster design. She has a lot of great tips for everyone. And stay tuned for Chat and Win. So five more minutes till then. Yay, cool. So uh, someone was asking earlier about file size. So this is definitely something you'd want to consider for a professional file size. Now, I have a little caveat here. And that is, I right down the bottom I wrote, the original is 50 megabytes. Oftentimes, and almost like all the time, I'll get a file that's this big, some original photo, and they want a billboard out of it, which we'll do. You have to do a lot of painting, and there's some techniques we have. But don't build a file that's huge if, it's j if your original is only this big. Build your file at the size of the original, and then consider resing it up at the end. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. I did do a billboard the other day for a very well-known TV show, very, very, very well-known TV show. I'm not kidding. The file opened was 89 gigabytes. 89 gigabytes for a billboard. It was That's ridiculous. Crazy. And it was because, well, the printer says you can give us a flat file at 300 dpi at size, which is a thousand, is a gigabyte flat, flat, no layers. And many companies don't realize Nah, you don't 
give them a file that big. So there's some miscommunication going on between the printers and the companies, and it can cause a lot of man hours and a lot of headache. You don't need to do it that big. I'm telling you, you don't need to do it that big. Anyway, um, I'm about to get into solutions, unless there's something else you wanna talk about. Well, we have three minutes till the chat and win, so we can do that. We can like start talking about something, but I'm gonna have to interrupt you. Okay, That's okay. I don't mean being interrupted. <laughs> um, also, and if anyone has any questions about size, uh, it's kind of not the, uh, I'm a legend. Someone said that's very sweet. Um, <laughs> Sizing and destination is really important. Uh, let me take a second here to talk about maybe some skill sets that are really, really important to, in my career. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a finisher or designer in entertainment or gaming, streaming, that kind of thing, what you really need to do is master masking. Master it. Masking is you live and die by your mask. Color correcting. Whatever that means, color correcting. Matching skin tones, uh, changing lighting. Um, but however you do it, levels, curves, adjustment layers, how you do it is not the issue, just that you can do it is the issue. The next thing is knowing where to get your assets, which we're about to spend a bunch of time talking about how to get some assets to build your file. And then third, fourthly, whatever number I'm on, file management. And what I mean by that is how big? How big do you build your file? How big do you, uh, where's it going? Where's the destination? How do you manage your job? And it's. File management is probably one of the biggest issues people have when they're starting out. They just don't understand how big, yeah. it, how big to make a file. And they're afraid to ask questions. Like, ask your client, ask the printer. That's so, a great point. Yeah, cool. I think most people are f afraid to ask questions when they're starting in any field. Uh, you know what? I, mean, I would agree with you. And I think also that even happens to seasoned professionals. Like we feel like, oh, I can't ask a question. And I have to tell you at this stage in my life, I am so happy to be able to say, great, I don't know. Let me find out. <laughs> do, you, do you understand what yeah. I mean? Like for example, I don't do type. As, as already has been pointed out, I can't type. So I don't, I don't, I'm not ashamed of it anymore. I just say, great, set your type. I can do any kind of effect you want on it, but I'm not your gal to set the type because I won't see the typo. Mm -hmm. And um, you guys aren't supposed to know every file size and every, how yeah. could you know? How could you be a jack of all trades? I actually get worried when I meet people that are new and they don't ask a lot of questions. 100%. And I'm like, are you sure that you know what's happening? Because I would rather you asked me instead of giving me something and then I have to point something out to you after and 100%. then it makes you feel worse. Like, yeah. So definitely ask. There's no shame in asking questions. And in fact, um, asking questions is actually a sign of professionalism. It's a sign yeah, that you're paying attention and you're doing your job. Yeah. Marsha says, do you still work on a Mac tower? Absolutely. I'm 100% Mac. Everyone in our industry pretty much is. You don't need to be. Oh, you really okay. don't need to be, but it's just what we're familiar with. So if you were to come to Hollywood and work and you were um, uh, working at an agency, no one's going to sit you down at a PC. No one. You'll really? absolutely be at a Mac. But it's, it's Photoshop, it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or Randall a Mac. says, what was your largest file? I'm t that was it. 89 gig. It was two <laughs> weeks ago at a job. My, I, I mean, I don't have a lot of hair as it was, but I'm sure it was falling <laughs> out. I was And I was rocking like this, like, oh my God, this file is too big. I will tell you, uh, so, so 89 funny. gigabytes open, and I'm not kidding, 53 megabytes closed, because you know how when you f close a Photoshop file, it gets smaller? Four and a half hours to do a job that should have taken me 15 minutes. Wow, that's crazy. But I charge hourly, so. So joke's on them. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, chat and win. Are you guys ready? You can win sticker meal uh, stickers. I'm like, what are they called? So let's get started. All you have to do is just say hi in the chat and you'll be entered automatically. Let's go. Okay, everyone, let's see you active in the chat. Tell us how much you want your stickers. Custom stickers. <laughs> Jesse used your quote, live and die by masks. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll take a t-shirt with that. Hanadi, Jesse, Austin, Ernest, Randall. Oh, John says, I feel lucky today. Let's see. <laughs> Brandon, hi. Randy, get in there. <laughs> Heather, Edgars, Elvin. 
Anissa, Navia, Jeff, Ivy, Fernando. Hi, Fernando in Spain. Hola. Yes, I should have said all of you. Nicole says pizza stickers. Pizza? I guess that's what I'll she wants to pizza. do. All right, congrats, Marisa Anderson. You won. So you get 100 free stickers oh. from Sticker Mule. And thanks for participating. A lot of people participated. And for those of you that didn't win, no worries. You can still get a discount. You can go to this website, stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, and you get a deal, 10 stickers for $1. Ooh, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, so send me a sticker. And she really needs some. I do, it's so So please plain. send Lisa your stickers. Yes. All cool. right, let's get back All to All right, let's get back to it. So uh, as someone was asking about how do you brainstorm and get ideas, so this is part of the process, is understanding different kinds of solutions. Now, I wanna be careful here. I'm trying to give you guys some context in entertainment posters because it's the visual vocabulary we use to sell these things. So there's a reason comedy posters all are white. Do they have to be white and light? No, but it's kind of this agreed upon visual language that we have right now. It doesn't mean you can't deviate, but if you're gonna deviate, know that you are deviating and people may not respond the way you want them to respond. This is really okay. important to know the, the visual vocabulary of the, the, the medium you are entering. That's interesting because I've seen a lot of these websites that are like the rom-com posters and they make you laugh because it's like every rom-com poster is white with red letters and yep. like two people yep. with their backs to each other or whatever. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, does it have to be like right. that? Right, and well, and no it doesn't. And honestly, I will tell you, uh, our version of the cutting room floor, the best designs 100% do not get picked. 100%. Oh, you will really? find the most, and this I'm so glad we're having this conversation, the most beautiful, cool, cutting edge designs are not picked. Why? Because they're cutting edge and people are, uh, they're like, oh, that's too different. We can't put that out. Mm. This is why I'm not a designer for a living. Yeah, because this is why I'm a finisher. I, I would cry. Oh, man. And um, why do they do that? Well, how many millions of bazillions of dollars are they spending on this investment? They're afraid. Mm -hmm. They don't want to put it out there. I, I get it. I 100% get it. So yeah. if you want to do more creative and fun work, what you should consider doing are, um, uh, what do you call them? Sundance. Uh, film festivals. Oh, or yeah. independents, because they're braver. There's not as much uh, money at stake. Uh, there's a question someone keeps asking and it keeps catching my eye. Uh, Ceza, I can't say your name correctly, Kaze. sorry. Kaze? Kaze, you said verbal branding and I don't know what verbal branding is. So if you can give me a definition for that, I can answer your question. Yeah, we're gonna ask you a question back. Yes. What is verbal branding? What does that mean? Okay, I'm gonna continue. So this would be a graphic solve, very graphic. Containers, very popular oh, yeah. way um, of solving. And look, one of the things I wanna point out is Look at these different genres. So you've got a, a kind of dark comedy with Suburbicon. You have a movie, a music documentary with This Is It. You have a, a Batman DC Comics uh, poster. And then you have a murder mystery vantage point. So the genres are completely different, but the solve is a similar solve. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, so the solve is not necessarily genre dependent. Here's another one. This show, uh, A Simple Favor, boy, they were into their containers. Those are three different <laughs> solves for the same show, for the same movie, but different, completely different treatment, treatments. Cool, so hopefully that's that's helpful to understand. Mm -hmm. The ubiquitous double exposure, people use it all the time. Um, it doesn't have to be tired. You were talking about like the rom-coms, the romance comedies where it's all the two people with the backs together. It does, even if you have to have the same elements, let's just say, mm -hmm. you, um, you don't have to have it be boring. And like it or not, this this is the industry. This is what um, this is what people do. So you've got the the water treatment where people want to have it look like it's underwater. It's really popular. There's different ways of doing it. Fine film to make. Oh. Um, fires and flames. So and why I'm showing you guys these is I want you to start gathering elements as we talk about your projects coming up for tomorrow. Um, and these are trying to give you some ideas. So the fire and flame, explosion, solve, usually action adventure or dark murder. And then you'll see sometimes it's treated subtly, small little flames and um, then the same ad. Do you see this poster? The uh, Reign of Fire? 
the same thing was used for a trade ad. So that was in a, I think it was a variety ad, but they, you, you, you cross-purpose these things. So verbal branding is giving power and value to words without relying on images or symbols. And I'm certain there's tons of people that do that kind of thing, but as I said, I don't do type, so, and I'm not a designer. So I can't answer that question, but you'll see people do it. A little fun fact, knowing your industry, Tom Cruise, he likes his profile. <laughs> do you see that? He, he likes his big yeah. head. Profile. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. He really <laughs> likes his profile. So um, he does like his big head too, but Tom Cruise, big head. Now, why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because know your market. If you're going to do fan art or if you want to work in my industry and you want to show some post posters, and if you do anything with Tom Cruise, you need to know this about him. You need to know because he picks his own stuff. Oh, really? And why am I telling you this? Because if you go to an ad agency and you're showing your work and you can actually show your, your portfolio of your, let's call it fan art, and you can say, look, I clearly see that Tom Cruise has a, a pattern here. And then you can follow that pattern, although in a unique way, that's one you got a leg up. Okay. Yeah, cool. that makes sense. Excellent. So let's talk about 80s illustrations and because this is a style we're going to be looking at for, for this piece. So Drew Struzan is the man, the myth, the legend, the monster who, who is the king of all things 80s illustration. Everything is modeled after him and he's amazing, does crazy, crazy work, very old school. I actually got to work on that Crikey ad. So Drew Struzan painted it, he's a traditional illustrator, actually physically does it. I mean, he's digital now, but he was doing these on, on illustration board painting. And then now this is what I'd call 80s illustration homage. So this is current work now being created in the style that Drew Struzan set up for mm -hmm. the 80s. So um, in um, Baby Driver, this was all illustrated, but digitally illustrated. So it's illustrated on an iPad, mm -hmm. okay? Not on a board. And then if you look at the composition on the one on the right, you'll see that's a very 80s, 1980s style composition. So these are things that you can um, think about when you're doing your composition. And I'm gonna show you how to get some of these files. Again, very current homage to 1980s. It's very popular right now. And uh, this Quentin Tarantino movie, which is out full blown homage to filmmaking. Yeah. The poster is an homage to Drew Struzan's style, and Steve Chorney did this illustration. And then on Ready Player One, Paul Shipper did this. He's a lovely guy, lovely illustrator out of England. And he did this, again, in that genre. So in that drawing genre. All right. This is where you're going to find your stuff. So all of you folks asking about where you're going to get your, your goods or your ideas, this is the site you want to be on. It's impawards.com. Let me see if I can open this up for you. It's like a treasure chest. Uh, it is amazing. So does everything go in there? Or uh, is it just I'm going to tell you almost, almost everything goes in there, including TV posters and whatnot. And um, so every current poster, who does Amazon does not put their stuff on there. Oh. So we haven't talked about that streaming versus theatrical. Can I talk about that for two seconds here? Of course. Okay, so it used to be back in the day that uh, theatrical, you know, theatrical is very, woo, movies, it's big. It seems amazing. But do you know where the money is? Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. They're mm. putting out so much content so much content. You that, mean the money for your field? Yeah, the money for my field. For entertainment advertising, okay. for movie movie poster design, Yeah, it's streaming. So I will tell you uh, a little career thing about me. I'm just gonna spin through this for a second. Um, I started out doing theatrical posters and that was when you had a week to do the finish so you could do a really good job. And then it turned into 24 hours to do a finish. And you can't really do a good job. And I'm a mom and mm -hmm. I have a kid. So I switched over to television because it was more humane, way more money in TV, wow. but it's not quite as sexy. I'll take the money. I don't need the sexy. <laughs> it's quite all right. Anyway, you guys, if you come in here, I just want to explain one thing about the site. So all the current stuff gets posted here. People are very proud of it. And then as you scroll down, scroll down, you're going to see a tiny little button here called view earlier updates. If you click there, you can see more and you keep going and going and going. And what's really awesome about this, and please take this as a great resource, if you click on the picture 
It will show you all the solves for that particular show, so you can look and get ideas. And then, if you look at that name, oh. it, it'll tell you sometimes, more often than not, who did it. Then you can look up the agency, so you can go work for them. You can say, hey, oh. Vaughn, you do amazing work. I want to work there. You can research their style, and then if, Absolutely. You, if you bring a portfolio, you can make sure that it fits in with their style. Yeah, look seen. at this. And then you'll, you can have a, uh, a good communication. You'll be like, hey, I, I saw you did Pirates of the Caribbean. That was great. I would love to do that kind of work. Yeah. So it's a good entry in. Now, in addition to that, see where it's the upper right-hand corner, you'll see it says movie title. We can type in Stranger Things because this is what the project is for tomorrow. And when you click on this icon here, one of them, I'm clicking on the most current. Hey, Mika. I love Mika Burke. When you click on this, please remember to scroll and then you'll see all these, and you can pick a character cell. So you can use this as a template, as a guide for, your, for the piece. And when you're on the site, you can just click and drag, and drag it onto your desktop. Wow, Okay. that's convenient. That's very convenient, right? And then you can open it in Photoshop, and we'll do that in just a second. And then the last thing I want to show you is this thing. See how it says year? My heavens. Look at this. If you want to find out wow. what posters they did in 1920, now they don't have all of them, <laughs> but can you guys imagine what a resource this is? That's How amazing. How about in 1966? This is great for any designer. Absolutely, a it's a huge resource, that's 86. So you want to do an 80s poster? Go to the 80s and look and get some ideas. Yeah. And again, it gives you context. So hopefully that's helpful. This can be your new Instagram. Just scroll through right? this website. Again, it's impawards.com. Okay. I just want to remind you, we talked about technical learning versus creative learning. So I'm not trying to have you rip off people. I'm having you practice. So we're going to use this for practice and mimicry so that you can learn and get some ideas. On that same note, I want to give you some other sites to look at. Let's for, move it up. So oh, sorry, of course. There we go. All right. Again, if you guys email me and inside the email tag put uh, Adobe Livestream, I'll send you the PDF of this. And all of these are hot links. So you can just click on them and it will take you to that. Behance is amazing. Do you guys know how amazing this is for uh, a resource? It's phenomenal. I use this all the time. And why I really enjoy Behance as opposed to IMP Awards is IMP Awards is what everyone's doing for our industry. That means people have already seen it. It's out there. And you don't want to design a poster in the same genre of a movie poster that came out last week. You gotta be really careful. So Behance is worldwide. There's amazing things in here. It's full of inspiration and um, full of other artists you can contact and it's pretty amazing. Power to the poster. <laughs> Do I just like doing that? Another great resource. All right, so when you have these resources, so let's talk about this for a second. Um, this is a roadmap for learning. Do you remember I talked about technical learning versus creative learning? So this in particular was one of the best uh, lessons I had about trying to expand how to use Photoshop. Van Ho is a photographer. I saw his work up here in San Francisco at a gallery. He shows here in San Francisco. He's, he's dead, but he's a brilliant photographer. And I love that piece on the left. And I was like, wow, how would I make that in Photoshop? And I use that as a roadmap. And that center picture is, um, someone's asking how to email me, lisacarney.com. It's right there. But what's your email? Lisa at lisacarney.com. Okay. But if you go there, there's a whole email <laughs> contact. You'll see it. Oh, there's a contact yeah. form. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, so, pardon me. Um, the centerpiece was my attempt at, at figuring it out. Like, how would I make this? And I'm going to walk you through this. So what did you start with? You started with that picture on the left? I started with the picture on the left, and I made the picture on the right. Wait till I show you. It took me half an hour. Wow. Half an hour. I'm going to show you that, I promise. And then it turned into a job on the right. So I'm just trying to get your get your ideas going. Tomorrow, uh, later today a little bit, and tomorrow we'll totally do how-tos. Okay. Wow. Rip off or homage? We have to have this conversation. <laughs> I'm showing you some trouble. This it's is some trouble here. It's time to talk about it is. rip off or homage. Right. Well, and because I think it's really easy to fall into this trap. Do you remember earlier I said that uh, you had one day to a week to come up with comps and you have to do three a day? Yeah. You're going to rip off some people. But if you're going to rip off people, maybe don't rip off the exact same pattern <laughs> and don't rip off the same color. I mean, look at this. Yeah. There was trouble. 
for this. And I hope I don't get in trouble for sharing this, but I'm going to share this. Um, the, the solo, the Star Wars thing on the right is in litigation. That was a French artist who did that. Full ripoff. Full ripoff. You cannot do this for professional work. You cannot. So I'm saying that because here I am telling you, oh, go find these posters and copy them. I'm talking about technical learning. I'm not saying creatively, I want you to copy these posters and then mm -hmm. present it as your own and then Just, get sued. Just um, work with them to understand how they were created rather yeah, than it's, copying it gives you, them. Yeah, because it gives you a roadmap. So if you took, for example, this solo or, or this Alfred Hitchcock piece, which is amazing, and you said, God, how would I make that? And you copied it so you know how to do those techniques. Then creatively, you go up and come up with a different idea, but you understand the techniques to make that kind of look. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus here. I'm not trying to be rude. I just think it's really important to, to be clear, to be clear about what, what you can and can't do and be careful. Mm -hmm. Isn't this fun? I think this is fun. Yeah. All right. So what I'd like to talk about now is assets. Toolkits, bag of tricks. This is going to be where you get your stuff, how you make your stuff. And these are the kind of things you're going to look for. One, stock photography. We're going to look for plugins, filters, how to make your own elements. Uh, you want textures. You're going to want to add atmosphere. Effects. So when I say effects library, that's like uh, lens flares or fire or water. And then, of course, color grading, that kind of thing, adding color. Now, a lot of this we're going to do tomorrow, but I want you to be thinking about these kind of elements. And where do you get your resources? So where is your library? Do you make a library of textures? Do you have gradients? Do you have brushes that you use? Do you have actions? So what I have here on the, um, the libraries, gradients, brushes, or actions, those are things I keep in my Photoshop. They're uh, plugins or presets that I keep, and I use them on my job. The stuff on the left are really more elements that are made. Okay? Hi, Eldar. Um, everyone, you see the countdown on the screen, design feedback. What we're doing is a challenge for today, which is to use visual effects such as neon and reflections and shadows to unify a night scene. And everyone is sharing their challenge submissions on the Photoshop Discord. So um, Tim will put the link up again, hopefully for the Discord app. And all you have to do is join and you'll see that in the current challenge um, channel, people will be sharing really cool projects and we'll be looking at those in 40 minutes. So you have 40 minutes to submit, and then Lisa and I will take a look. So that's a good opportunity to get feedback. Excellent, excellent. All right, so someone asked about storing images. I have a gazillion hard drives full of image libraries. Beaches, wow. sand, fire. I mean, I've, I have way too many. It's a little hard to manage, but yes, I store images. Uh, I store way too many. I've had drives fail because how much money can you spend having a backup of a backup of a backup? Uh, and then I just shoot more when I need it. But yes, I store, I have a whole set of image libraries. So for your assets for this job it, that we're gonna do, so we're gonna do that character cell, right? That 1980s style character cell. Just go shoot someone. I shot a girl at the coffee shop. And then Randy, I shot Randy right outside. I'm gonna show you these, guys, these files later, but just go shoot something. You're fine. Don't don't freak out. It's just go outside and shoot open lighting. You don't need to have special lights. This is an open shade. There's no direct or harsh lighting on them. And uh, it's not that hard. You can get assets that way. If you need uh, cement, go take a picture of cement. Okay? It's not that hard. If you need wood. And it forces you to go outside. Absolutely, which is good. And get away <laughs> from the computer for a minute. And then there's stock photography. And I really want to talk about this. I use Adobe Stock all the time. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I think it's inexpensive. It's um, um, it's a huge asset for me, and I'm going to talk about that for a second. I said expensive, and I want to talk about that. Royalty-free versus rights managed. When you guys, I hope everything's spelled there. Okay, what has happened in our industry is if you use a rights managed image from stock, and you don't get that cleared, you they, clients have to pay through the nose. So clients have to pay on average between five to ten thousand dollars for a sky or a cloud if it's a rights managed image. I have had a network, a TV network, that had to um, pay twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars for a rights managed 
file. It was like How grass. How do you know if it's a right uh, When file? you do your stock. So if you're shooting, if you're doing your stock search through Getty or something else, you actually have to check a button that says rights managed or royalty free. Oh. If you're on Adobe stock, you do not need to worry about this, but you need to know if you need to do the extended license or the regular license and Adobe stock can help you with that kind of thing. I just want to call attention to it. Yeah. Okay. So, so for the most part, you don't have to worry on Adobe stock. No, no, not at all. What you have to worry about is the licensing. Do you do standard? Uh, let me show you. Um, so I use Adobe stock all the time as you're about to see. I love it, I love it, I love it. What I love about Adobe Stock also is you do not have to buy the image until you know you're gonna use it. So you can actually mm -hmm. comp with it. And we're gonna talk about that in two seconds here. And uh, when you comp with it, it'll have a watermark in it. And then once you, um, you know you want it, then you go ahead and license it and it just updates. It's magic. It's absolute yeah. magic. So there's a standard license and extended license. And there's rules with Adobe Stock. You can read it on the website, which will tell you when you need to use which version. Okay. But it's fantastic. So for this project, I would recommend you guys go in there and go to Adobe Stock and do a search for like uh, fireworks because you saw the picture, right? If you want to do that one, you can do your own kind of thing. Can you open the picture again of that Stranger Things poster? Yes, absolutely. So that we can remind everyone. So this is the aesthetic that we are working on. Right, so in fact, tell you what, uh, let me show you my search I did for this picture, for this uh, um, piece, because I've already done my search. And can I tell you a little secret? It's not gonna be secret the minute I say it. <laughs> um, the actual images, except for the fairgrounds that were used in this poster are on Adobe Stock. Wow. So I did, I got fireworks, I got grass for the foreground, Oh, there is grass in there. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. It's right in the foreground, right behind her. Yeah. And then the clouds. Let me move this. Thank you for bearing with me. Whatever clouds you want, that's the one that was used. Wow. If anyone cares. <laughs> that's the actual clouds. But you don't have to use that one. You could use these. And I'm gonna show you how to how to use this and how we're gonna place them, but here's here's the assignment for you, should you accept it, is go on Adobe Stock and do some search. Find what you want. If you wanna copy the idea of the poster we have, you're gonna need a nighttime fairground shot. You need some grass or some kind of ground texture. Fireworks, because we love fireworks. And some clouds. Coolio? Okay. Sounds good. Excellent. All right. So let's talk about the, how this stock gets used. It gets used all the time. So see for the solo teaser, Adobe stock. Castle Rock, this is the actual piece for Castle Rock. These are the actual Adobe stock that was used for it, for this wow. real piece. So these are actually used in real pro jobs. All right, I'm gonna go to Photoshop now. You guys ready? Oh my gosh, I'm so I know, ready. I'm sorry. We've been talking for what, an hour and a half? We're with dying an to hour get into with Photoshop. no Photoshop. All right, <laughs> let's get to Photoshop. I hope it's interesting for you guys and helpful. Yeah, everyone has been saying it's very helpful. Excellent. Because I will tell you that the number one um, the number one issue that folks seem to complain about or deal with when they're starting poster design is coming up with ideas and so that would be the inspiration. Right? Mm -hmm. And then actually getting assets. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So we talked about Adobe Stock. So now inside Photoshop, there are so many great, great options. I'm not going to spell everything correctly, so forgive me for abbreviating. So let's say you want to have some trees. Well, that Adobe, that, um, it's really interesting, that Castle Rock picture, they bought stock of trees. And I was doing the finish and I said, why did they do that? In Photoshop, there's called something filter render trees, which I'm gonna show you right now. And they didn't have to buy stock. That's the great thing about using this. So when you, you make a new layer, you go under filter render tree. Holy guacamole, look what's here. Wow. Willow have, trees. There's a whole forest in there. I know willow trees are probably not in um, Egypt. I'm picking a willow tree because it's fun. Look at this. Wow. Isn't it beautiful? Now the key that you want to uh, keep in mind when you're doing this, if you're comping or designing, 
and you know you're gonna have to do a larger file later, you wanna render the trees out at a higher res. So, oh, someone got it. We got a whoop whoop out there. All right, new tree. Nicole is yeah. shocked. I'm telling you, and who knew? This has been in Photoshop for eons. I will tell you, uh, the new tree render, if you tried this before, like a few years back, eh, it was all right. The new tree renders, holy, I want to say a bad word, but holy I'm not allowed guacamole. to. Holy guacamole. Holy guacamole. They are absolutely amazing now. Um, really amazing. And they keep getting better. And you can change the leaf amount. So let's say you want to do a dystopian horror film. Wow. And you want something to look dead. That's amazing. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea this existed. Right? Fat tree. Branch thickness. Skinny tree. Change the branch height so that the tree, do you see it went down? Or it goes up tall. So if you wow. need to make trees for the back and then trees for the front, isn't it rocking? That and is then, awesome. um, yeah, there's, anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it's, it's, it's fairly amazing. And inside here, I just want to call out a couple of, there is an advanced section. And in the advanced section, you can change the leaf color. It'd be nice if I put some leaves on there. <laughs> so oh. let's go back to advanced and you can say, Hey, I want them kind of pink. Why? Because why not? Cause I can. Cause I can. Wow. Isn't this fantastic? And it doesn't cost you any money. It's in Photoshop already. Okay, so that's tree render. I use it all the time. You'll see it all over. That one came out a little this lame. This looks but, perfect. <laughs> right? Perfect vibe for this kind of thing. Okay, tree renders. That's one. No need for stock. <laughs> flame render. Now, flame render is along the same kind of idea, and it's it's making flames. You might think, Okay, I'll bake a fire. You can sometimes use it to put flames over type or do whatnot. But what if you think really differently? I'm trying to show you something my computer's saying. Slow down. What if you use flames to make hair? Wait, what? What if you use flame render to make hair? So I have this a whole PDF on how to make this on my website for free. So just, it's under the resources. But I'm gonna show you real quick what it is because it's so cool. Well, I think it's super cool. So this is one of those areas where I like to think outside the box in Photoshop. So uh, the, the creators of Photoshop didn't intend for this to be made this way, but what I've basically done is created hair, flowing hair, and I'll just color correct it with a quick color correction, using the flame render. How you do this is you take a pen tool, click from where you want to start the hair, you have to draw a path for this. Hmm. Okay, you have to draw a path for this. Then you go under filter, render, flame. It's a little long, that's all right. And you wanna have it be one flame along a path. You don't wanna have it be multiple flames. You can change the turbulence. So see how I made it longer? Oh. Wow. And then you start to build it. So let me turn that path off for just a second. So why do I do something like this? Because I'm not a good illustrator, oddly enough. And I wanted this kind of like comic book kind of fantasy hair. I'm going to show you how the actual file was built. Jan says, I can't believe this. Lisa, it's cool, right? Lisa is on fire. Yay, I'm glad you like it. So what I did is I just did a path. Jan. You know, little flame there. I built it up in layers because I wanted to turn them off and on. So if you guys can see this, I'm going to try to go slow. Let me um, put something darker behind it. Ooh, that's so cool. So it's just different flames, just repeated and repeated and resetting it. And it's going to be this color. Don't let the color throw you unless, hey, maybe you like that color. I don't know. And then I just put a color adjustment, a curve and a gradient map to color. Jesse says, it. never paint hair again. Just light people on fire. Right? And it's pretty fun. And it's really, really crazy fast. So I, I, I know I'm going through this very quickly. I just want you to have resources here. Don't freak out on me, please. I know I'm talking fast. If you go <laughs> to lisacarney.com, there's a whole PDF right there. 
and then it's a multi-page PDF. I It'll walk you through the stuff. Flames. I do too. Your hair would be so cool with those flames. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone could do that. Take a picture of me and put some flames on it. I want to see it. Yes, practice on Lisa's hair. All right, so that's two free things you can get, right? You can get the um, trees and you can get the flames. Let me give you another free one because we love free. Free 99. <laughs> and that would be rain. So oh. oftentimes with movie posters, what we do is people spend hours looking for the perfect stock shot. So let's say they get a stock shot. With my industry, people do this all the time. They spend so much time and they put the same rain. There's a movie with, uh, oh gosh, I'm having a brain fade. Dark City, it's all very comic book. Anyway, all the, uh, all the actors had this same exact stock shot used over them. Uh, Bruce Willis is in it. It's a comic, like a graphic novel show. Anyway, um, you, the the standard practice is to put the screen to, to put the rain mm. on screen mode, and you get something that looks like that. And then you mask it in and out, and maybe you put it at a different opacity, right? So there's your there's your rain. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is something different. We're going to go to a new layer, and we're going to call it rain fiber. Mm. We're going to have black as our default color in the front. There's nothing in the layer, nothing up my sleeve. Filter, render. I'm using a trackpad, by the way, which is really hard uh, to do this. Fibers. I bet most people don't know that this is in here. So it's under filter, render, fibers. Yeah, let me do it again. Filter. Again, it's all gonna be on the PDF. Happy to send it to you. Fibers. Okay. And you can change the variance. You can change the strength. This had black as my foreground color. I'm gonna put white as my foreground color. Filter, render, fibers. Just a little different, okay? Let's just say we like that for giggles sake. Put that on screen. Doesn't that look like rain? Yeah. And it was free and you can Command T to transform it, and you can change oh. the direction. There's free That's rain. Cool. You can even Sin City. Thank you. Someone called it Sin City. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and then you can just duplicate it. Command J and make more. Put a black mask on it. I know I'm going very fast. You can replay this. Oh. And paint more in if you want it darker or lighter somewhere else. What did that take me, 30 seconds to put that in? Yeah, so in normal human time, it would no, be like- Five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Well, I've been doing this a long time. So again, this is just really basic. It's been in Photoshop for eons and it's it's rain. Pranjal says, I like the way you bring together basic things into a whole new imagination. Excellent, thank you very much. Well, I, I really, really, really would like people to think outside the box, including myself. This is kind of the challenge. This is what that Fan Ho thing was. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if I could recreate that Fan Ho piece with nothing. I got one stock shot and I'll show you that in just a second. So again, here's the thing to think about. There's a stock shot you can pay for and everyone has the same one, or you can make your own filter render and just make sure you put it on screen mode. Okay, that's all you have to do. What? Oh, okay, I see. In, because, in and we're gonna talk about that more tomorrow. So I'd like to reiterate right now that my idea is I'm showing you all these things so you can kind of get an idea. And then tomorrow we're gonna have this whole arsenal of uh, techniques and we're gonna put them together in the piece. Yeah. And use them. So okay. make sure you stay tuned tomorrow too because it continues. Same time, same place, same people. Cool. Next thing, free flares. <laughs> It's all about free, free, free. I get complaints because I, I like plugins that you pay for, but. Yes, um, but why not use yeah. what you get? Like if you have a Creative Cloud subscription and you have all this stuff included, right. that's a lot of value that you should try to make use of. Okay, so for the flares, what you want to do is make a black layer. Make a new layer, fill it with black. Command delete fills with the background color, if anyone cares. Little quick key there, filter, render, lens flare. And you can move it around wherever you need to. 
hit OK. Once again, put it on screen, and then just slide it over. Wow. Free! That's like an alien scene now. Yes. Like an alien just yeah. descended onto it. And you. if you don't want the colors, you can go Command U to get the colorization up. Uh, I'm sorry, the hue saturation. And maybe I want to colorize it to be warm. Hmm. Command U. And then I just click Colorize. So again, it's free. It's free, free, free. Now, there are other uh, uh, opportunities out there in the universe that are not free, which are wonderful. And this is Lens Flare Studio. And Lens Flare Studio is 30 bucks. 100% worth it's 30 bucks. 100%. So uh, notice for Man of Steel, I can hand draw that, that flare. But for 30 bucks, I own an application that I can actually make my own flares in it and save them out. And the opportunity, it's endless. You can have artifacts, you can have uh, banding, you can, you can see that in the, in the screen. So it's um, Brain Fever Media, but if you just look up uh, Lens Flare Studio, you can find it. I think it's worth 30 bucks. Oh, I'm on full screen, that's why. Uh, it's worth $30, but if you don't have $30, don't, don't worry about it. You can paint these or you could use that render. But if you have 30 bucks, this is pretty great. Do you see these Lens Flares really often? In posters? Oh my god, yes. Really? Every Superman, Spider-Man, not su Spider-Man as much. Every Superman poster has it. Batman has these, and they look like these. You yeah. can, you guys go to IMP Awards and look up these things. You'll see these flares, I, I promise you. Yeah, once you see it, it's like you hundred percent. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about is um, tomorrow, I'm going to talk about mobile apps. In my industry, it's a total no-no and we're totally starting to use them now. Things are shifting oh. mobile. Why I'm saying that is there's actually a lens flare generator for a mobile app that I'm gonna show you tomorrow, which is not $30. Oh. So, but that's tomorrow. You have to hold your horsies. <laughs> um, and someone says, if you have an iPad or iPhone, their apps work well enough for Pro, they 100% do, yes. And I'm sorry, I didn't know Lens Flare Studio was only a Mac driven thing. Thank you, Mika, for pointing that out. Um, oh, Tim's pointing out no light factor. I used to love that app. Okay, oh. my newest favorite toy. I know you guys have featured this on live stream before, but I have to talk about it because it's my absolute go-to favorite new, for me, elements thing. And it's called Pixel Squid. And oh my oh. God, do I love this program. So Pixel Squid allows you to do um, 3D 3D elements, actually, let's not show her. Let's do this one. So as you guys saw earlier, I showed this series that I was working on. Uh, it's a personal project. I'm talking about life a little bit here. And um, I needed elements that I couldn't shoot all of them. I didn't have all these elements. Uh, it would have costed me a lot of time. Plus, as often the creative process for me goes, is when I'm, when I'm working on creative work, it's usually, I hope it's not too graphic, I'm like, Ugh, I gotta get it out. And it's a timing thing. So I don't have a lot of time. And so with Pixel Squid, you can actually look up elements, save a library, and get all sorts of elements um, that you can pick. So this airline thing, I'll show you this in a second. It's gonna take a minute because it's actually, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, it's rendering. Come on, baby. The internet might be a little slow for my connection here. Let me go back one here. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to Photoshop for a second because I think I'm gonna show you the next part of this. Anyway, all these items, in fact, let's pick this one. Okay, it's rendering. I'm getting a little render here. Bear with me. It'll be worth it, I promise. And Jan, I'm sorry I gave your secrets away. <laughs> so what happens is you can pick and rotate and, and make this do whatever you want it to do. You can a export a PNG with shadows on or off or a PSD, or you could save it to the light box. Now I wanna show you something else. And I'm just gonna flatten this file for a second here so we don't have any confusion. 
Pixel Squid, pay attention here, gang. I don't want I don't want you to miss this, and this is not on the handout. There is an extension you can get for Pixel Squid for a Mac. I do not know if you can do this on a PC. And when you do this, check this out. You go to Pixel Squid, it launches a little library window. This is so cool. You want to make sure you're logged in, and I know I was already logged in, but I actually have to click it twice. I don't mind clicking twice. Small price to pay. Small price to pay. For All right. this resource. So now, look what I have here. I have whatever I've put into my library. So I can click on, get this, be ready, watch me. <laughs> my favorite thing, I know I get so excited. Okay, it just placed this in here. Isn't that cool as a smart object? Oh, but that's the wrong angle. Oh. Give it a minute. There's an internet connection here, sorry. <gasps> oh, Mika says it works fine on PC. Thank you, honey. He's great. Mika's wonderful. I, I see him at Adobe Max every year. See you in November, honey. Um, I'll, I'll see look you at this too. That's cool. And then, so let's say we like that. Command T it. I can rotate it. Wow. That's amazing. Isn't this crazy? And they have so many elements. Jesse is gasping. Yay! Like holy s balls, right? I'll reenact your gasp. <gasps> right? Look, it all it's all interactive. So again, it's uh, the the secret here is the extensions, and you just download that off. This costs money. I do, I pay a monthly subscription of of twenty bucks because I use this for everything. You do not need to. They have a bunch of free items. Pixelsquid.com. Check them out. Find out what works for you. I think it's amazing. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can download it with a watermark for free. And then if you decide you like it, then you can purchase what you need. That's cool. Right? So I use this all the time. It's my new favorite trick. Now, I burp, pardon me. Uh, I would like to show you another favorite trick plugin. It costs money, 100% worth the money, and it's the Flood plugin. They also have a mobile app, but the mobile app is not quite as, um, Flexible, shall I say? I'm going to say flexible. All right, so let's talk about this. How are we doing on time? We're doing oh, okay. Good. Okay. So my series I told you about, oh, I've been really sad. I've been really sad. Um, I wanted to use to have the sense of, you know, I was drowning. Like life was not doing so well. I'm gonna, This is the base element. I'm just going to delete this for a second. Command J, make a copy of it. Flood. This plugin is a little rudimentary. It's from a company called Flaming Pear. It costs $30, $33. Oh, you can try it for free, I think. Hmm. Filter, Flaming Pear, Flood. I don't know the name. I'm sorry, I don't get the name thing. Flaming Pear will let you make any kind of water with whatever scene, but the coolest thing is it also, it reflects. Look, wow, that's isn't that really just cool. awesome? You can change the perspective. So the water level is changing. You make it come further out. Mm. You can change the waviness. Oh, it's not too bad. It's glassy. Oh dear God, what's happening? It's a storm. Wow. Right? You can change the light source. How long would it take you to do this without this plugin? Is it possible? It's 100% possible. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, it, it, uh, why I'm hedging is it really depends yeah. on what my light, what my source is. But I would say an hour, hour and a half minimum, minimum, and I'm pretty fast. Yeah. This takes me. I would say conservatively because I was changing my mind. It's rendering. It's rendering. I'm on my email computer, by the way. This is not my retouching station. Did you think that took five minutes? No, less. Maybe? Yeah. Less than five minutes? Like five or less. Put my rain on because I'm sad. Put my thing on. Put wow. my color. Wow. There's my piece. That's cool. Not bad, right? Okay. Any questions about that? I'm sure there are. <laughs> Am I going too fast? I hope not. <laughs> All right. Austin says, the information today, mind blown. Thank you, Lisa. You are awesome. Yay!
Everyone yeah, is screw saying that the 3D stuff. Thing. No, oh, no, no, screw that 3D stuff. I love 3D. My brain does not love 3D. Okay, so I wish I could do 3D, but um, I can't. I keep trying. Adobe Dimensions. I can do stuff in Adobe Dimensions. All right. You guys asked, well, you asked. Yeah. How did I do that fan ho piece? What did I have? I had one stock shot. I'm going to show it to you. And that was it. I had stock shot of the, um, the guys in the sea. So let us, let us do this together. I'm going to throw that flood plug in. All right, so what I had was, I had my idea, right? I had that guy, so I drew, oh my God, this is gonna be a little embarrassing because it's really lame. And I'm praying everything's labeled. Okay, I started with the little gradient for sun. Actually, truth be told, truth be told, I put the guys in there and I masked them. It's just a stock shot, okay? Mm -hmm. That stock shot, Adobe stock, with a little hue saturation, and then I filled in their net to make it a little darker, and oh. I masked them out. That's all. How did you make the net darker? A channel pull, which I absolutely cannot do in this time frame. Yes, I just It's fast to and know. easy channel pull. That's how channel I did it. Pull. Okay. okay. So um, I'm gonna just throw away the, the horizon line I made for a second. All right, so what I did is I put them there. I literally drew a mountain with a lasso tool. Oh. And I called it layer one. Oh my God, shoot me dead. I called it layer one. So <laughs> label your layers, damn it. Another mountain. I put a lens flare. Didn't we just do the lens flare? Yeah. We did, we did it render screen, remember? Only I did a black and white one. And I put a gradient map, excuse me, I did a gradient fill, a gradient fill, which is an adjustment layer, gradient fill to make the vignette. Gradient fill okay. radial on normal mode at 67. So, so far you're with me, right? Atmosphere, we're gonna talk about that in a second, in another minute. I literally painted with a dust brush to make wow. some clouds. Okay. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Then what you wanna do is you wanna use your flare. So your, your water. Give me one second here for a minute. Clean this up. All right. So what do we have? We have flood plugin. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna turn this off, all this off. I'm gonna make a duplicate. Command J, it makes a duplicate of the gray. Do you know when you use that flood plugin, you can do it on a blank screen. There's nothing there. So I'm picking the horizon line. I'm picking the offset. I'm picking the waviness. I'm picking the complexity. Picking where the sun is shining. Holy guacamole, look at that. So that's some rough sea. Maybe I want to bring that down a little. Maybe bring the blur up. Whatever you want to do. I'm just going to hit OK for now. Good night, Yusuf. Hi, Jesmar from the Philippines. Kyle Webster's brushes. Someone's mentioning Kyle's brushes. Definitely talking about that. So this happens to be the setting I picked for this one. The one I did when I first tried it was this one. So I, I blurred the water more on the brilliance and I moved that, that radial. Mm -hmm. You could put it wherever you want. Then I just masked out my, my fabulous mountain I did with the lasso tool, painted some atmosphere, put the boat in. Wow. As I mean, easy as one, two, three. Isn't that crazy? I mean, look, it, it's amazing. You can combine different waters and you can play. Uh, I mean, right? Yeah, so that's really you can cool. do whatever you want. Um, it's a little clunky. It will sometimes crash sometimes. So save before you start. Um, I can send you this, which will send the, we'll show you the settings I happen to use on this particular one. But literally I made that water with a gray layer, All right? Cool. Um, so now I want to talk about brush. How are we doing? We doing okay? Everybody good? So Any questions? we have nine minutes until the deadline to submit your design for the challenge today, which is oh, right. creating a night scene with neon um, or cool light. 
and I'm seeing a couple submissions, but I need to see more in the Photoshop Discord. So submit your challenge um, piece. It would be great to see more, and then Lisa can give you feedback. Yeah, I'm here. Um, Juan Jose was creating this night scene earlier, right before our live stream, so you can watch that replay to see some inspiration. And you can see all the other submissions in the Photoshop Discord under current challenge. So you have eight minutes and 30 seconds to do that. And then we'll review some of those. Excellent. And then we have a few more minutes after that. Okay, cool. So I want to talk about um, adding atmosphere, which is another thing you're definitely going to want to do on this piece that we're doing for tomorrow. And you might want to have this kind of thing. I have something called a dust brush I've made. And I'm just going to move the screen for a second. So. You can get this if you email me. I might not be able to send it to you today, but I can definitely send it. I have a, a dust brush that I have at ABR. It's my own, my own little brush. If you get it from me or you download one from somebody else or you make your own, uh, you just grab the ABR file and drag it onto the icon for your Photoshop to load it. And then that will show up in your brushes. Now I'm using a tablet right now. I mean a, a pressure tab. Tomorrow I'll have my tablet, so, so don't let it throw you. When you load the brushes that way, it will show up in your brush library, okay? I have a lot of brushes. I very much love my, my brushes. And um, my dust brush happens to be right here. So I'm gonna select that. And it literally, I'm gonna make it uh, a little heavier than it should be. Right now it defaults to an opacity of 70 with a flow of 10. The flow is lovely on this brush. And look at that, you can just paint in fog. So don't go buying a stock shot of fog. Just make it. Mm -hmm. And it's just paint. It's just a brush. Now, um, I think I've mentioned before, I uh, teach at Creative Live, and I have a whole class on brushes. These brushes, I, I'm going to tell you, I think the brushes in Photoshop are probably one of the most underutilized tools, and people really don't understand them. One of the reasons is it's really hard to find all the information in one spot. But here's where the juicy bits are. And I know on the screen it's gonna be really hard to see, but it's because it's small. But under brush settings, where you wanna go is you wanna go to your uh, shape dynamics. If you're using a tablet, you wanna go to scattering, you wanna go to transfer, and change these items here. This is really kind of complicated stuff. It's easy once you get into it. I will send you this brush and you can double check these out or you can do some research. But if you go into these little, checked areas and see what things are set at. This is where you get that variation in size and density and flow is all under settings. So that's where you want to look. You want to look under there. Anyway, Kyle's got some amazing brushes, Kyle Webster, and his brushes are, God, I hope I remember this. If you guys are on Creative Cloud, um, brushes, 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 I should know this. I never do this anymore. Hang on. Get more brushes. Okay, on your brush palette, the delta or the triangles or the little, little squiggly bits Hamburger. on the far right, the handles, whatever you want to call them, there is something called get more brushes. What does he have, like 1,500 brushes in there? And they're all free now. They're all free and uh, th I thousands. I say free. You pay for Creative Cloud, so yes. they're included, they're included in your subscription. Dude, these brushes. I just called you all dude. But these brushes are exquisite. They're absolutely, absolutely exquisite. And they're amazing. They're so well done. And you wanna grab the concept brushes. See, it says clouds right there. And you oh, just hit yeah. download and it will download those brushes. And then when you download them, they will come in and then you drag that icon onto your Photoshop just like I did. Remember how I dragged that little brush ABR over? Mm -hmm. that, you'll get one that's called concept. And then here's what you'll have. You'll have all his brushes. Now I have one complaint and I love this man. And the one complaint is every brush says Kyle. I, I know you guys can't read this, but every brush says Kyle's concept brush, bird mix. I would go in there and just take off cause you can yeah. just take off the word Kyle and just call it bird mix. That way, once you're searching, you don't have to look for Kyle's this. You can just click on the, double click on the name of the brush and you can change this, delete the name. So it's just the name he has. Do you have a way to organize your brushes? 
Um, I organize them uh, this way. There's something that can't be discussed about coming out that will help this later. How's that for a tease? Uh, but I do, like I have, I make individual folders and one of my folders is called Lisa's Favorite Concept Brushes. And that way I know those are the my go-to. That's great. I because ain't, there's so many. Honey, there absolutely is. And you can also make a new folder and call it my, my Stranger Things Job Brushes. You can put whatever brush you want in there. Let me open up a smaller. Um, let me see if I can manage my window here. So I'm gonna drag that into my Stranger Things. And then, pay attention here, gang, this is important. I could put every brush that I use for this job in that folder. I then go to the, the delta to the right, the, the pull-out menu, and I can say export selected brushes, which would be that folder, and I would store it in the job folder. Okay, cool. So that way, six months from now, When they come back to me because they love my work so much and they want me to do season four, I go to my archive and inside my archive, I have season four brushes, season nice. three brushes. That way you can, you have continuity with your files and your jobs. Yeah. So look at all this free stuff. Well, with your Creative Cloud. Yeah. Kyle's brushes, love them, love them. They're amazing. Um, do you remember we talked about earlier the technical learning versus the creative learning? I will tell you right now, my suggestion is that those brushes are overwhelming. There's too many. So what would you do? You would do technical learning. That means say today, I'm gonna look at Kyle's concept brushes and I'm gonna open up that folder and I'm gonna take every single one of those brushes and paint with it for a second and see what it is. Maybe rename them. Hey Joe, uh, maybe rename them so that they don't have his, his name in the front of it. And then what happens is when you have a job, you're not, wait, how do I use this brush? You will have already figured it all out. Yeah. And then you can just be free to be creative. So give yourself a minute to, to do the sampler, to, to do your scales, play with the metronome, do the boring test every little line, and then you'll be more experienced. On that note, there is a brush plugin. It's expensive. Let me be really clear, very expensive. And for me personally, worth its weighted gold. It's called um, Particle Shop, it's by Painter. It works in Photoshop. It's buggy as heck, which means it crashes all the time. But in five minutes, I can do fire streaks like that. And so for me, the first job that I bought, bought it for, it paid for itself mm -hmm. and it was worth it after that. I do know it's buggy. I use it on my Queen Mary jobs all the time because it does really super effects. And I'm not even gonna show it to you because it'll crash this. I'll, I'll see if I can do a quick demo tomorrow on it, but it, it doesn't like this station very much. Again, really clear, it's very expensive. If you don't have um, the money for it, don't worry about it. But if you do, it, it's really a great asset. Buggy and is heck. One minute to submit your challenge. Um, cool, I'm gonna go to my type section. So I'm, I'm doing more plugins here. All right, so I wanna talk about another plugin. And um, this one is, do you remember I said I don't, I'm gonna talk about this for a second. I don't do type. I'm not very good at type, uh, but I can definitely do effects with type. So one of the plugins I like, it's it's a little expensive, but again, it's worth its weight in gold for me because I'm not a 3D artist. And that would be Alien Skin. So Alien Skin's got a plugin called Eye Candy, and they're offering a discount if you use my name, Lisa Carney, for 10% off through the end of this September. After that, it goes away, but who knows, maybe they'll start it up again. And you can try it for free. The best thing I wanna repeat, you can try this for free. And I'd like to walk through a quick little demo here. And we could do the countdown if you wanna do that. Or are we good? Let's wait a second to see if anything else comes in. Okay, so. cool. Cause I'm gonna be at a good stopping point right after this. <laughs> um, excellent. So uh, let's talk about eye candy. Eye candy is a plugin that allows you to take very boring or not boring, but just set type, plain type. What's a good word for just set type? Just type. So, so take some type. <laughs> and you can um, add some effects to it, like this. This is literally a single plugin with a click oh, of a wow. button, you can do it. So I'm gonna double click on this eye candy. You can also do them on smart objects. 
when you get eye candy again you can demo it for free it's a really great it's a tiny little company they're really sweet when you open it up what you're gonna find is you're gonna find all these options here and I think their icons look a little goofy but the functions are not goofy so uh, the first one here we're gonna look at is Chrome and when you have Chrome there are presets that are available inside this we'll talk about that in a second you can change the bevel width so look at that look how smooth that is isn't that beautiful wow. can you change what is reflected you in? can you can and give me a second for that in just a second anyway smoothness yes you can absolutely change um, you can put pits wow lots of pits you can put lumps Ooh. you can do smoother lumps so can you imagine chrome like car what if you want to do a yeah. side panel of the car so um, I'm saying this because you might want to think about things um, uh, outside of outside of what's already existing um, you can also so on the reflection map they've got built-in I'm sorry let me be really clear there's basic I've clicked over a panel to lighting okay and you can change the highlight like how much highlight brightness you have you can change the highlight color you can change the tint if you want to give it a tint I'm not going to give it a tint there's colors here but no tint for me mm -hmm. um, you can change the abstract reflection so that's penny stained glass steel uh, industrial I mean look isn't this crazy you could have this whole fire thing but what I tend to use it for more is the imported so in the imported you could bring your own images in it's gonna take a oh, minute Oh, that's cool so um, in fact there's a test color these are actual jobs I was doing I, I left <laughs> I left my actual jobs in here um, one second let me let it do its rewrite I'm gonna see if it will import the stranger things in here hmm. I didn't test this nothing like so, doing it Irene just use Lisa Carney without a space as a coupon code yeah for eye candy yeah I'll show you that screen in just a second I'm not sure if it's going to import that I forgot what file fight format you need for that so um, right after this we'll look at the challenge stuff cool in the next minute or that's so. that's the coupon code I believe it's a capital L and a capital C all right and they're a really small company so if you have any trouble you can just uh, email them nice all right oops 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 accidentally um, so uh, what I just did is in movie poster land what happens is we get someone to set an illustrator might as well show it since I have it they set the type in illustrator and they place it in InDesign and then we do it in Photoshop so someone else set that in illustrator and gave oh, it to okay. me I do not use illustrator I I use Illustrator when I have to to go in and change something but I Illustrator is not my program it's not in my wheelhouse That's fine. Uh, so the type is a smart object from Illustrator so if it has to get updated it can get and you know they change the logos every yes. you know, oh that J needs a little longer whatever <laughs> uh, you can still apply the same effect that's great to it. cool so right. um, I just had a couple more things to show with that if, if you mind or do you want to skip? I think we should go to okay let's go to it's the thing not a lot not a problem it's only going to take a few minutes awesome so just to show you Ooh. this is the starter file that's beautiful that um, was given out to everybody so the challenge was work with this file and add some other elements to unify it and make it into a scene awesome so we had a couple people here that submitted this is from Ant. Fun. So this is really cool. They added a lot of elements. That's here. really cool, and I really like the glowiness of the of the cube. Yeah, that's really cool. That feels very Stranger Things to me, kind of. It's got yeah. that kind of vibe. That's really cool. Because it's like it could be in a normal neighborhood. Yeah. Just on a normal road. Can I, I make one suggestion? Yeah. I think it's and I, I do. I think it's really beautiful. I I'm finding the moon a little distracting that it's cut off. I was just gonna say does that look 
Because I can't see a lot of clouds, so exactly. I don't know why it's cut off. So if it was going to be cut off, what I'd suggest is maybe some clouds, maybe in the uh, bottom right of it a little bit that had a highlight on it that would explain the moonlight coming over or explain the clouds or add clouds or put the whole moon in there. Because there's just no detail, so it's a little unexplained. Yeah. But it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. That makes total sense. Pantone cube, that's good. Love it, Aunt. Here's Valentine Pierce. Run, baby, run. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> it feels like a Pink Floyd, doesn't it? Like it's heading yeah. towards a Pink Floyd kind of thing. Um, really interesting. I like the illustration kind of feel it has. I think there's a scale issue though. So for me, if you have elephants and they're in the foreground of the street, those elephants would need to be huge because mm -hmm. the road's small. So maybe just a suggestion, if you don't mind, that, that you make the elephant big, really big, and have it just entering the, the screen, perhaps. But um, actually, I got to tell you, without the elephant, if you just crop that off, that's already groovy cool. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there's your image. That looks really cool. Yeah, it looks very cool. I love the sky that yeah. you did. Um, the light source is a little... If the if the moon is lighting it from the back, uh, then the um, shadow should be in the front. But I know it's got a light in the front, so there's a little light source issue. Mm -hmm. Just a little, but it's cool. So this shadow. Yeah, yeah that if it, if the thing is lit from the front, that makes sense. But you see a moon in the back, right? Yeah. So maybe 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 ditch the moon, because then you don't have to explain the light source, because they could the viewer could presume the light source is coming this way. Yeah. Just the thought. That's what you're here for, your thoughts. That's awesome. Okay, so she used a different, um, or clock he'd used a different starter file. But look. That's really fun. That's cool. That's really fun. I can see that being a movie poster. Absolutely. If the robot was more, jumped out a bit more, yeah. if it was like a character. Yeah, you know what might help with that? If the black density on the, robot got darker. So if you mm. put, if the black density on the robot's back got deeper, um, then the robot will pull forward and the rest of the scene will, will recede back. So you would make the darks darker instead of highlighting yeah. the light part. Well, because the lights are already pretty light. Yeah. And you're competing with the lights in the background also. You might need to add a little bit of rim light, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, oh. which could really help that. Got it. But yeah, definitely the density of the blacks just on the robot. That's a great tip. Oh, it's Mika, by the way, <laughs> who did this. Oh, oh, it's beautiful, sweetie. Well, no wonder, it's beautiful. Yeah. He did great work. Here's Chelsea. So are there two of these or are they the same? Oh, it looks the looks same. The same. Yeah. Wow, really cool. Ooh. Yeah, that's kind it's of It's kind of dystopian space. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm squinting while I'm looking at it because I'm thinking, um, I love the color, pot, by the way, that 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 mauve color is really beautiful with the, the green is really nice. I feel like maybe the moon is too bright without having another bright element inside the main picture. So if you squint down, all I see is the moon. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I want something else to pull me in and have the same amount of lightness in it, same value. Not mm -hmm. a ton, but just something to, to, to bring you through because otherwise the subject is the moon. Yeah. Maybe this object could be lighter or yeah. it could be something. And have here. the same hot, hot white. Or maybe the, the moon, the value of the moon. What if the value of the moon was warmer, kind of like the wisps in the background, mm -hmm. and darker. So the moon is still there. It's just got the, the, the values way stepped down, and it's warm, like the background. The background wisp, you know the clouds? Yeah. That's a good idea. Awesome, Chelsea. And I think that's all we have for today. Awesome. Well, thanks for participating. Yeah, I don't think there's others. There's some from the previous challenges. That's fine. Um, I just want to make sure there's no others from today. But wow, oh, there's some seven, beautiful stuff. There is. There's some beautiful stuff. Let's see. And let me know if I missed yours. If anyone else 
um, submitted earlier, but here's another one. So this was before. Mm -hmm. It's a great shot. And then after. I love that. I absolutely love that. That color palette is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the the the, uh, the reds with the cyan, the complementary colors, and and the tone. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It's very, it's like subtle, but it still draws you into the person. Do you know what it kind of feels like? It feels like an Edward Hopper painting. Mm. Look that up, Edward Hopper, really does. You know oh, what? Hey, hey, we have Jesus Google. is joining us. Hi, Jesus. Jesus is a favorite here. Yes, he's been watching. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Do you see what I mean? It's got it that vibe. Like, it's not as vibrant this as a hopper. This is early morning, but. Yeah. yeah, or even like the the, the uh, Nighthawks piece. It just has. Uh, yeah. Or the Night Watchman, the I think it's on there. Yeah, the uh, Night Windows. Yeah, there's just, it's got that kind of, well, first of all, compositionally, it's almost, it's got a little thing going. Yeah. I know the colors are more vibrant, but it's got that that vibe to it. Yeah, definitely. I see that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So that was from Klaus. Klaus, so beautiful. Thank you everyone who submitted and keep going because this Discord channel is here for you to get feedback and share your work. And um, I'm in here, I'll be looking. So that's wanna, really awesome that you're participating. Yeah, I wanna, okay, I'm gonna jump in if you don't mind about this participation thing. And I, I am so about this this year. I'm gonna put it on my Behance page for a second. I, as we talked about earlier, I feel like we all often as creatives are in this um, vacuum. We really are. And it's so hard to put ourselves out there and put our work out here. Behance is such an amazing venue to put your, put your work out and, and just say, hey, like, I, I got a story to tell. I have something I want to say. And, and put it out there and do work and do creative pieces for no other reason than to share it and, and get feedback. And I have people feed, giving me feedback on Behance all the time. It's amazing. People are saying, wow, I felt that, or oh, how did you do that? Or I'm interested in this. And um, I feel like it's really important to be brave. Mm -hmm. And put your put your work out there. Put yourself out there. Put your story out there, and participate. Because what else are we doing it for? I don't think we're doing it to sit in a closet and do some artwork and then look at it on our own computer. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for sure. And and that's why this Adobe live stream I think is so amazing because it's an opportunity to share and talk and yeah, have this and course. even saying hello in the chat. Sometimes it's intimidating to do that. Yeah. Or ask a question in the chat, but definitely do. There's been a lot of people that joined their first Adobe live stream like a few months ago and started saying hello and then met other people on the chat and joined the Discord and joined Behance. And now I see that their work has really improved. Yeah. They've become more confident. Yeah. So all of this is, all of these are venues for you to improve and network with your peers. Well, and let's talk about networking for a second. So I'm sure most people know Facebook or are on Facebook. We have a, a finisher and retoucher group in LA hmm. that we started. And we have people uh, who are actually not in LA who are actually in part of the group. We share our work, we share when we have shows coming up. We will message people when we have jobs. Like I've, I've actually hired people outside of the group like, oh my gosh, I have a retouching job. I need some help, are you available? I have reached out to people who had questions about billing mm -hmm. and they didn't know how to, how do you price yourself? And um, that was all through Facebook because we joined the community. Like we, you, you put yourself out there. So um, I will tell you, cause I know Jesus as well. We answer questions, people email us. They have a Photoshop question. If, if you have people who are on Adobe live stream, we're already putting ourselves, we're already saying we're part of the community. So email yeah. us, participate. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's a good point. Um, so we have another about 10 minutes left. Okay, cool. I would like to uh, talk about two things if possible. Uh, one, I wanted to finish up on the um, uh, yes, the, uh, the alien skin. There was just uh, about thinking outside the box. So with, um, with uh, the um, alien skin, sorry, you don't have to just use it for type. You can use it to actually create elements. So I have done this on jobs where I've created a, a bevel 
mm -hmm. and and seen. So, for example, we have jobs where we have to create rooms and environments where stuff doesn't exist, and you know, frames and mirrors and treatments. And what are you going to draw them or shoot them? I mean, what the heck are you going to do? But if you can get these little, what do you call these elements? There's a word for this. That, like a. I don't know. Crap. Fleur. Think, yeah, fleur. There's fleur a, or a glyph leaves. or a, or this. There's a, that kind of thing. Like these little Illustrator files. You can get these on stock. You can find them in inside embedded Illustrator. Yeah. And I, I just want to stress that there's so much more you can do with this plugin than than just type. There's so much more. And um, I, as I've said, I've created whole rooms. I've got logos. Look at this. Um, for the LA Kings. There was a flat logo, and they needed it to have dimension. I did this all with um, eye candy, quickly. Yeah. I mean, really quickly. And um, it's it's one of those tools of the trade where it it's like my little secret, but I don't have to charge quick prices. Yeah. Like just because this took me ten minutes to do, it took me twenty years to learn where to find these plugins, where to find these things. Do you understand? And um, so again, kind of with the flame hair, think outside the box. Think about um, how you might use the same item differently. And then I just want to spend two minutes, if I can, um, real quickly talking about a few of the things that are inside the eye candy because uh, these are things that I also did not find till later and they really helped me out. So as I said, there's Chrome. That, um, so you know the, the, the man series I did with the, the water? Uh, we did the flood, and I'm standing there, and the flood's coming up in the yeah. mantle. Well, I needed a brick floor for that. That's how I made it. I tried to shoot the brick in front of my house, and it was all cattywampus, and I would have had to extend it. I just made the brick here. And you can change the brick color to whatever you need it to be. And you can change the scale, the mortar depth. And um, it, it's amazing. So I made the brick wall. On more jobs than I care to tell you about, I have used this weave to make fabric when I didn't have fabric. And you can change the, I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've used this. You can change the weave depth. So when you have clothing and you need to put a, a, a texture on it, mm. this you make it with this and you put it on overlay and you can do that. So there's weave in there. I don't use, there's shadows amazing. His, his shadow function's really great. Um, the brush metal is great. The clouds are goofy. The diamond plate, I use this all the time for stuff all the time. As you, I mean, think of the, um, the Marvel. Uh, I had the Marvel Shield Eagle up earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I use this. So cool. instead of trying to find a stock shot that's perfect, you can actually just make this stuff up in a plugin. So that's a little of that. Yeah. Cool. Any so I, we didn't ever talk about how you started in your career. You said that you went to Art Center in Pasadena for photography, I right? I did. So can you start from like high school, yeah. just a little summary because Absolutely. everyone's asking, how did you become Okay, a cool. I, would, I don't mind talking about myself at all. Um, so when I went to Art Center for photography, I thought I was going to do um, uh, fashion photography. And I weighed probably 60 pounds more than I did now. And I felt like poo every time I finished a shoot because I was so fat and everyone was so skinny and I didn't like the kind of people that were there. So I'm like, great. I'm gonna switch to editorial portraiture, no problem. And I switched mid, mid, mid school. And I love shooting portraiture, it's one of my favorite things to do. And then when I graduated Art Center, which was back in the Stone Ages, because I'm a little old, uh, I owed $100,000 oh, for my degree, and that was a long time ago. There were 150,000 photographers in LA at that time. That's the day I graduated. Insane. Do some research before you go to college. And, because uh, <laughs> I did not. And the market was in New York, and I was LA based, and I didn't want to move to New York. So I'm freaking out, I'm working at a camera store, and there was a finishing house. They used to be businesses that did movie posters on their own, oh, called a okay. finishing house. And they had proprietary computers, like Shima Seiki's, Quantel paint boxes, Flames, million dollar computers. And if they had Macs, they were just for people to do masking, and that was it. So I went, I love movie posters, and I said, ah, I just wanna go you know, work in a movie poster company. And I tried out, and I got in. And then Max came out with quad boxes, which were more powerful. And all of a sudden, the entire industry shifted on its head. And now Max were the way we were no more million dollar computers. Mm. The bummer about that is that operators on those computers used to make $450,000 a year. 
because it was such a specialized things. And then Max came out and it was like, yeah, we're not paying that anymore. But that's how I started. I just, just switched over. I was really good at Photoshop. Uh, my photography skills were, I used to cut transparencies and sandwich them together. Jerry Ellsman style, like montage. So I was already compositing. Mm. And then I just, um, I just kept going. And wow. um, in fact, that leads me to another question or another thing I wanted to talk about, about getting started. Um, if you bear with me for one second. Uh, so I just made the jump and I just did it. And people ask me all the time about um, uh, working in this industry. And it's a great, 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 great industry to work in. Um, there are some issues. Can I talk about money for a second? Yes. Okay. I just want to talk about experience and money and hourly rates. Um, I make a lot of money an hour because I'm fast. The job is what the job warrants. And what I mean by that is if you have a one sheet to, to build and the price is, if it's an average one sheet, the price is going to be $2,500. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. If it takes you um, four hours to do it, if it takes you eight hours to do it, that's kind of the price of the one sheet. So you get paid what the job is also worth but there's kind of this experience thing that i'm going through and i actually tend to not tell people my rate anymore and i try to bid a job because of how long it takes me so imagine this you've got someone who's got two years of experience and they are 40 dollars an hour let's just say and they're going to take two hours to complete whatever job you've given them so it's 16 times there's 640 dollars i have 20 or 30 years experience i'm 135 an hour let's say and it takes me six hours to complete the job, but my rate's higher. Hmm. Now, what do you get for that extra rate? It's gonna cost maybe 150 bucks more, somewhere in there, but you don't have to manage me. I know what I'm doing. You don't have to tell me what to do. You don't have to um, uh, be concerned. You know, I've got a, awards I've won. I know what I'm doing. So you don't have to micromanage me and it's fast. So do you have two days and do you want to pay less money for someone who's less experienced? Do you want to pay 150 bucks more, have a better job and have it faster? Hmm. So these are considerations if you guys are pricing yourselves out and this is how you want to sell yourself. You want to sell yourself that, look, I do better quality and I'm faster and you don't have to micromanage me. I know how to ask about file size and managing jobs. Yeah. I know about this kind of stuff. And so think about that when you guys are pricing yourself and communicate that. So I don't bid. I don't give my rate up. Generally, I will say, great, send me the job, I will quote the job. Okay. I hope that's, that's helpful. That's good advice for even if you're on the other side, like two years of experience. Yeah. It's good advice to say Good, that. good, yeah, because then you'll get there. And then real quickly, I just, I forgot to mention, I did want to talk about managing file size. Do you remember I said um, the, the, the five things that are really important to, uh, I think it was five things, to becoming a finisher? Yes. Uh, or being good was masking, color correcting, retouching skills, cloning, healing, and file management. And what I mean by that is knowing where your job is gonna go and knowing to ask. Like when mm -hmm. I do a poster, I, um, I'll i say, great, are you doing a bus shelter also? Do you wanna do a billboard? Mm. And I ask in advance so that I can, one, build to the proper size. Is this going to a magazine? Is this web only? So I get told all the time, let's say for Amazon, that we're gonna do a, a key art and it's just for digital. It's just gonna be on the on the computer screen. I've been doing this way too long. I know full well they're gonna do a poster. Yeah, and I they're gonna tell well. you like last minute. Last minute and then it's gonna be a rush. So yeah. instead I build it bigger in the first place. So keep in mind that when you're asking and then as I said, you'll have this screen which help you with, um, with file sizing. Yeah, um, so we have like one minute. Okay, cool. So to game, talk about tomorrow, right? Yes, yeah, so tomorrow we're gonna build a poster together. So please, if you're gonna join in, which I hope you do, go get some assets. We're gonna talk about, you know, shoot somebody, shoot them in the garage, shoot them out in the, in, on the street, whatever. We're, go to Adobe Stock and see if you can find some stuff you like, some clouds, some fireworks, some grass, uh, anything you like if you wanna mimic this. Please go to IMP Awards to find some ideas. Let me uh, put that up again real quick. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Clicking too much stuff, sorry. 
and we're gonna build together. If you don't have time to gather anything, don't worry about it. Just come back tomorrow and watch, and I'll yeah. show you how to do it. You can and do it at a later yeah, time. Yeah, so tomorrow she's gonna show us how to create a poster that's based on Stranger Things. Yes, it's based on a kind of 1980s. We're gonna talk about special effects, how to put yeah. like glowing edges and flares. We're gonna talk about how to put your assets from Adobe, uh, um, Stock. Stock, thank you very much, from libraries and uh, adding the yeah. brushes and that kind of thing. So even more advice, even more live demoing, and we're going to do a project together. So stay tuned tomorrow, same time, same place, Ari and Lisa. And it was great to see everyone today. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.